Right. Now what we've got here might look like a pile of bits, but it is our old tumble dryer, which is a white knight 37AW, I think. They were also branded as um Crossley tumble dryers, as you can see. Uh it needs a clean, amongst other things. We've had it for 15 years or more, and recently it's developed a, a grinding noise, and that's down to, in part, this piece of felt here, which I don't know if you can see it, but it's got quite an extensive divot missing out of it. It's, it's worn away, basically. Whereas the piece on this side seems quite intact. Uh, this is one of the old seals, which you can see uh, it's probably seen bad days. But basically it works. Um, the element is fine, it heats up, it cools down where it should. It just needs a bit of an overhaul and a very good clean, um, which you should do anyway. This is one of the vents. I'll give you an idea of, you know, you get a lot of dust fluff and crud build up and um, one of the other things it needs is new bearings which are these things which is a new one on me but there you go and that's one of the old ones this is an old one from the back of the tumble dryer and as you can see it's um quite worn this is a new one So, yeah, I'm going to replace them. I've got um, a new set, so this is a back one. To be honest with you, I don't know what the difference is between the black coloured ones and the white coloured ones, but I just thought I'll replace like for like. And so I've got essentially two sets of bearings. Uh, these are the old ones. You can see there's quite a little bit of wear on some of them. But others are um, basically fine when the reason that's like that that's a fault when it was molded so these are probably injection molded there's another one that's got a fault in it so they were probably not molded but they've got no wear on them so to speak not compared to that one and obviously that one there the larger of the white ones again is worn you can see where it's shiny it's kind of almost polished, but whereas these ones have got like a, an almost matte finish. But yeah, so it looks like when it goes round, it pulls to this side more. Um, and so much so now that it's actually probably worn most of the felt away. You can't quite see it. But there's nothing there virtually apart from the steel casing. So what I'm going to do is replace this piece of felt, give that a bit of clean, give the door seal, which is this piece here, a good clean, and obviously clean the inside out, because that's probably a fire hazard. Replace the bearings and see what happens. Um, I did take a video while it was running, so you get an idea of the noise it's making. So if I fix it, obviously it won't make any more noise and it'll still work. So, there we go. You can see I've already got it taken apart. Um, it's a fairly straightforward thing, really. It's just a lot of screws to undo. But I will put me putting it back together on. That makes life easier. Um, there are some wires, obviously, that I've had to disconnect. These are the uh, wires that supply the power to the element, heating element, which goes there. Um, this is obviously the thermostat control. It's not that complicated, but if you're not sure about wiring and things, I find a phone is a very good tool to use because you can take pictures of every step you've done and then just reverse it, you know. So if, for an example, I was replacing the timer, which is this, then I would take a picture as it stands and then I know... You know, like this purple wire goes in the bottom, this one with the white dots goes in the top, orange in the bottom, so on, so on. It's 
<coughs> a very handy thing to do. Just take pictures. Of course, though, if you're not confident with that kind of thing, um, get somebody else to do it. Somebody who is. Uh, that's one of the old seals. And these are nice and shiny new ones. I will say, though, that because this thing is 15 years old, finding parts for it was not particularly easy. <clears throat> Most of the websites like Partmaster and Spares to Go and other places like that had them listed, but they were all out of stock or not available or withdrawn from sale by the manufacturers. Um, so it was a bit of a pain. However, I found these and the price of these is roughly, well, it's, it's a lot less than buying a new tumble dryer. And like I said, everything else works. It's just, just the horrible rubbing noise it makes as it's going around, which probably isn't doing it much good. Anyway, right. That's that for now. We shall start pulling it about and trying to clean it up. Okay. Stay tuned. Okay, so we've had a bit of a clean. It looks uh, marginally better in there, believe it or not. I've tried to clean out all the little vents uh, in the door here and obviously the vent here which leads to this tube which is where it vents out the back of the machine to give you an idea of some of the stuff I found. Lovely. Right. We get rid of that. So, what I've also done is I've taken off the uh, old bit of door seal or drum seal. So this piece is all right. Giving it a brush. There's still hardly any wear on that compared to the other side. And I've uh, given the seal here. So all this a good brush. Get as much dust off it as possible. Obviously they. This is a new one. There is a, a fair bit of difference between the colour, but then it's 15 years of use, it's not that bad. So, there's my replacement bit of seal. The idea being is that I will stick this on there, like so. Probably won't stay there, but. That's where that will go. Um, I don't know what they use to adhere to stick these down with. It's um, probably some kind of sticky back sort of adhesive. I know you can buy replacement felt for tumble dryers. I wasn't able to get hold of any, but this is the same kind of density felt. And most of the replacement kits seem to be just like a, a bit like the intumescent seal that you use for around windows for draft excluding. So literally you just peel it off the back and stick it where you want it. So that's what I'm going to do. I've got some, uh, this is carpet tape basically, double sided carpet tape. So it's got a good adhesion. So that'll be the next step. Okay, so we'll put a new bit of seal on. Then we'll fit the new bearings, which is a really simple job. You can see where they basically just clip on in fact here we go look so obviously this side up you can tell the difference basically it should just clip on there that's it it's on nice and secure to get them off pliers work um i'll put that one on as well look. They are literally just a push fit. And there's another one just here. There. So There's one bearing, there's the other one. 
and there's the third and obviously on the front door or front side where the drum goes you can see just there that's where the other bearings go so just pop that one on This one, which is just here, There's that one, and one on the other side, just there. It's a bit difficult to see. There, so. New bearings fitted front and back. The new seal has to go. It's a bit hard for to see, but basically it goes around this part to seal the drum in. Um, so I'm going to stick down the new bit of felt for the drum to sit on, and then start putting it back together. Okay. Righty ho. So, replace my little bit of felt. We've got all the um, bearings on. I've just replaced or I'm just I took these ones off again because they weren't sitting very well. Well, you can see there's like a little gap in the back of that, and just on where they sit on the actual framework, it's just a little basically piece of metal that sticks out. A little lug, and hopefully. Get them in the right place. I should click like that. The other one. Let's just have a look over there. might not have quite lined up obviously we don't want those coming off when the tumble dryer is moving let me see if i can push that out a bit okay it feels a bit better let's see if it'll go on better Right, so that's all the bearings on. New bit of felt, it's on there fairly sturdy, and probably as clean as it's going to get. The next thing to do is obviously put it back together. First thing to go in is the drum. To do that, it's fairly easy. Put the belt on first, and obviously. hard to do one handed but it should slide in there there we go so if the drum obviously here sits like that oddly there's no piece of seal up there and it doesn't look like There ever was. There's no adhesive. So I might actually put another piece of the old seal up there as well. So I'll just do that quick and then we'll get the drum in properly. Right. So I've decided to put another bit of felt up here. There wasn't one originally, there's no signs of any adhesive either. And oddly there's none of this stuff on the front of it. But never mind. Anyway, to get the drum in, 
put the belt on first because if you don't you're only going to have to take the drum out to do it because you can't obviously get the belt around the drum once it's in here well you might be able to I'm just making sure the belt's the right way up which I probably should have done first right so there we go next thing we've got to do is get it all where it should be which is not the easiest thing to do when you're trying to hold a phone but there you go but essentially it should sit in the hole a bit better than that mostly now we just got to get the drum lined up nah. Nah. okay so I've put a couple of screws in the top and the bottom of the frame so that I don't have to keep trying to hold it and to test them to make sure the drums spinning freely And then it's a case of putting all the gubbins back in or on. So there's the uh, metalwork that holds the element, which goes on the back here. And the way the tumble dryer actually works is its power is supplied via, obviously, the mains, electric. Um, there's a capacitor on the motor as well. This controls the temperature the tumble dryer gets to when it shuts off. So when it reaches heat, this will shut off the power, which just stops the element heating up. Um, as the drum spins, the motor obviously spins as well. And the fan blows the hot air up here and into the holes in the drum. And then through the drum and out the front door where the vent is. And then it comes out the back there, basically. And that's it. They're not very complicated machines at all. Um, obviously, the condenser dryers are. A little bit more complicated because uh, they've got more gubbins into them but essentially what this is is a drum that hot air gets blown into and it spins around at the same time here's the element in there and a kind of element i think this one heats up to about 60 degrees as its max um, needs a bit of a clean but that bolts on in there uh, I think it's that way up. Just where taking pictures helps. But you can line it up from where the screw holes are, so you can see just about there. Screw hole there, screw hole there. And just in there. And then there is a back plate that obviously keeps it all nice and uh, enclosed, which has got to go on as well. So what I will do now is I will put the element back in on and wire it back up and then we'll turn it on see if it spins. Right, I've got the back on, all screws, it's like loads of screws. I don't quite know why they need that many on something like this but there you go. You need to um, obviously collect the, connect the drive belt, belt to the melt motor which is up here. There you go, just about make it out. And you can do that on these ones through a little hatch. And the other thing, as you might notice, the red line on the drum. Well, that's obviously what they use in the factory, and I assume that's what the dots are. To make sure it's running as it should, you don't want the belt sort of off at an angle, otherwise it'll start catching on bits and pieces like that. So you can use that and you can see as well where the, the wear line of the belt on the drum is, which is a good in indication of where it should be. So the next thing to do is uh, put this little hatch back on and turn it on to see if it spins and actually heats up. Well, there we go. Okay, moment of truth. Let's turn it on, see if it spins.
Well, I'll put the little video I did of the uh, noise it makes, or was making, in with this one so you can hear the difference. But that is a lot different. And the belt's almost lined up. I might move that a little bit closer to that red line. And there, there we go. Obviously, we need to see if it heats up to make sure I haven't damaged anything. But uh, basically, that's it. It is fairly simple to do, a lot easier to do if you use both hands and don't hold a phone at the same time. Um, but there you go. Big parts, like I said. That's for the old one. Back, you can see where it's worn it away. It's like almost like a like an L shape there. The parts are um, were hard to find. The usual places I go to for parts, couldn't find them. Um, I will put the link of the person I found who had the parts in the description on the video. Um, should you ever need bits for a 15 year old tumble dryer. But uh, there we go. Thanks for watching. running it's been on now for over half an hour and sounds a lot better than it used to so see how long it lasts I guess hopefully another 15 years all right thanks for watching <laughs>